Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 91 surviving episodes broadcast on NBC Radio from 1934 to 1957, we bring to you Lights Out. Good evening, this is Van Christo. Welcome to the Van Christo Radio Theater. Tonight, we present another of the radio plays of Arch Obler, the famed writer and producer of Lights Out. These collected plays, presented under the title of The Devil and Mr. O, represent radio drama at its finest. This is the theater of your mind, where you are about to enter the zero dimension. There are no boundaries or time limits here, only the depths of your own imagination. And now, to tell you about tonight's program, here is Mr. O. This is Mr. O, Arch Oboy. Have you ever wanted to turn time backwards to a pleasanter era, back to the days long before ticking atom bombs and air pollution and the inbred madness of our cities? Well, our story begins after a word from your announcer. The most natural... Well, this is Mr. O again. Now picture this in your mind. We're in the Dordogne region in France. Beside a road shimmering in the heat of the midday sun stands a large, dusty limousine. The lid to the engine is open, and a begrimed little Frenchman tinkers with the mechanism. Within the car sits an Englishwoman, Kay Stanton by name. And next to her is Jim Brent, an American, a member of our own State Department's diplomatic corps. By the way, if you haven't turned out your lights yet, turn them out now. And listen to Neanderthal. Aren't I what, Monsieur? Aren't you clever with engines? Oh, I think I will rest a moment and talk with you. Oh, this sun. It is doing its best to fry the little brains I have left. <laughs> Poor dear. Come on, get in. Jeffrey was worried about your ability to fix the engine. <coughs> ah. Most comfortable. You should try working with your hands, my dear Jeffrey. It gives one a most exquisite appreciation of the comfort of upholstered seats. Sorry I'm such a dotted machinery. Now, yeah, now, Jeffrey, don't be so stuffy. Claude's much too primeval in his ways to be subtle. He thought you ought to help fix the engine and be shouting the fact at the top of his voice. Not at the top, my dear. But perhaps in the middle register. We, oui, Kay, as usual, you are right. I like all knowledge of the diplomatic art. If I do not like what a man is doing, I'm forced to say so abruptly and completely. What an advantage you men of the diplomatic service have over we other poor mortals, my dear Jeffrey. Sorry, but I'm much too warm at the moment to think you're very funny. <laughs> oh, you too. <laughs> the minute you get together, the great battle of words begins. Aggressiveness versus diplomacy. <laughs> the financier versus the diplomat. <laughs> As the Americans say, bury the hatchet, my friend. Uh, I'm afraid Mr. Wallace will never appreciate my virtues. He likes men who sit around green tables and talk. I, on the other hand, do not like sitting. I do. The um, diplomatic way of getting things done is the only civilized way. And again, monsieur, I must beg to disagree. There comes a time when if a thing is to be done, one must do it. And diplomacy, how do you say it, be hanged? Hmm. The philosophy of ruthlessness. Caveman philosophy. What do we know of cavemen? I know that a ruthless aggressiveness may reap temporary rewards, but those rewards that have come in a far greater and more permanent form have resulted from the use of a civilized code. A friendly exchange. Calm consideration of facts. The, the, the ethical way of life. The ethical way of life. I tell you... Monsieur, All right, gentlemen. There's just about enough of that for one day. <laughs> so sorry. A thousand pardons, my dear Kay. Are you certain it will run, Renner? In my simplicity, I know but one way to find out. And that is to try and start it. Voila. Clever thought, isn't he, Jeffrey? Let's hope it continues to run. Oh, charming thought. Let's be on our way, Claude, before we fall apart. They said in love.
We're very late, Claude, so speed's the word. Right. The sooner we get out of this country, the better I like it. Why do you say that? Oh, I don't like this place. It gives me the chills. With the sun doing its best to parboiler. What are you talking about? I'm not talking of temperatures. I'm talking of atmosphere. These forests and hills. Whenever I travel through here, I feel as if I were passing through a place old beyond decay. That is amazing. Hmm? What do you mean? Because what you say of this country we are passing through, you speak profound truth. Truth? We are at Le Mustier. Le Mustier? We. Oui. Does that mean nothing to you? No, nothing. <laughs> Not to me either. Le Mustier, the Mysterian period. From dawn of mankind. The Neanderthal man. Me. Ne- we here, we here. In this country which you say is old beyond decay, were found in Neanderthaloid skeletons. What do you call cavemen? Men from the dawn of man's antiquity. Claude, are you serious? Some of the finest specimens of Neanderthaloid skeletons have been discovered in the caves right in this region. Really? It is unfortunate we are in such a hurry, or we could stop, perhaps, and see a few of the caves where the excavation have been made by the anthropologists. We haven't time for that sort of thing. I said as much. Claude. So I was saying, the anthropologists have found the most wonderful remains of this early species of man who are said to be the source of the horrible ogres in our fairy tales. <laughs> what are you talking about? Silly nonsense. Yes, Claude. How could anyone possibly know after 50,000 years what this Neanderthal caveman looked like? But that is simple. From the peculiarities of the skeletons that have been found, it is simple to reconstruct the physical appearance of the race. Really? I remember hearing the hands and feet were very large, the thigh bones curved so that the men walked like apes. <laughs> Teeth and jaws were large. Enormous brow ridges resulted in a fierce, horrible expression. Oh, how nice. Oh, no, no. They were men and not men. Horribly characters. Hey, would you mind telling your erudite friend to step on the accelerator? We've got to be at Monet within two hours. We'll never get there at the pace he's driving. And, Kay, would you tell your impatient compatriot that I drive as fast and in a manner that pleases me alone? Would you tell him that? Claude! Look out, the road's blocked. Don't swing your wheel, you fool. The crank here's something that's wrong. The crank! Hey! Ah! Jeffrey, please open your eyes. Jeffrey, please open your eyes. I'm so frightened. I don't know what... Okay. Oh... Oh, thank God you're all right. You, you're all right. Oh, yes, I'm all right, but, but Claude, I don't know where he is. The cliff. We went over. We were thrown clear, I guess. The car's over there. It all broken up. But Claude, I, I can't see him. Yeah, help me out. <gasps> oh, oh, what is it, Jeffrey? Oh, my arm. Broken, I guess. Oh, Jeffrey. <laughs> oh, I'll be all right. I'm lucky to be alive. I don't understand going over that horrible cliff. You claw up. Back here. In the brush. Well, come ahead. Well, what's the matter? Are you hurt? My, my knee. Hey, uh, are you all right? Oh, yes, Claire. All right, stay where you are. We'll come to you. We'll come to you. Don't move. Oh. Sorry, God. I have to get my uh, bandage. It is all right. A little pain is better than oblivion. Oh, sorry, I can't be of any help, old man. There's a blasted arm of mine. It is all right, my friend. Kay is doing excellently. Cold it is. We oui. that wind. Freezing. But how could that be in the middle of July? Claude. Jeffrey. What is this? The car goes over a cliff, we don't die. A warm sunny day, and now suddenly it's like winter. What is this? Tell me, what is this? Steady, we oui. there must be some logical explanation. I know this country, like you say, like the back of my hand. 
There is never such cold wind here in July. I tell you... Oh, Claude, you shouldn't try to get out. Why? I'm all right. Oh, we've, we've got to get help somehow. No. No. All I want now is a cigarette. No, I haven't any. Oh, there, there's some in the side pocket of the car. I'll get you. No, 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 Jeffrey, I'll get you. But you, you can't go through the bushes with that arm of yours. I'm all right. I'll, I'll be right back. Kay. Kay, wait. No, I'll be back in a minute. This infernal me. You better sit quietly. Quietly, quietly. It is not in my nature to be quiet. A stick. Get me a stick. I'm not going to lie here the rest of my life. Get me a stick for a crutch and I... Wait. Wait a minute. But I tell you... Wait, I tell you. There's someone coming. Okay. No. No, the other direction. But I do not see. There, over there to the right. Now, don't you see? The bushes are being yes. pushed back. Yes, I see. Some prisoner will give us assistance. We oui. Now everything will be all right. Of course. Oh, there we are. He's in the clearing. Now he... Oh. Who is that? Oh, no. Claude. Who? Oh. Am I mad? This cannot be. He... He's looking at me. God. Yes. Who? Oh, you do not understand? Understand what? Talk up. You do not see him as I saw him. The short, hairy, twisted body. The head thrust forward. The neck bent like an ape. Those enormous brow ridges. The broad, flat nose. He did not recognize. Well, well. One. In your own British Museum. I saw a reproduction of a man like that. Huh? But never did I think that. I would see him in life. I tell you, speak. Who was he? Who? The man of the cave. The Neanderthaler. Near? Are you insane? Why, the race is extinct 50,000 years. I tell you only what I saw, what I know. And I tell you, you're mad. But you saw as I did. No. The thick, hairy body. The short, ape-like limbs. That misshapen face like, like something out of a nightmare. Yes. A nightmare of 50,000 years ago. A caveman comes out of the past. No, no, stop talking like that. It can't be, I tell you, it can't. He's some madman wandering his forest, that's all. Why, cavemen died here 50,000 years ago. The past doesn't come back, I tell you, it doesn't, why? Claude. Eh? Kay. Oh, Kay. Kay. Kay, Kay, where are you? Kay, where are you? Kay, Astro, Kay. Now a word from your announcer before we return to the excitement of Neanderthal. Bit today! You'll be glad you did. This is Mr. O once more. Let's go back to our story of Neanderthal. An auto wreck somewhere in France, and out of the past has come a man of a cave, a creature supposedly extinct for 50,000 years. The Frenchman Claude believes that this has happened, but the American Jim Brand does not. Now the two men are searching for the third member of their party, the English woman who has suddenly disappeared. We give you again Neanderthal. Well, it's nonsense, I tell you. Hallucination. Eh? Yes. Yes, hallucination. Driving along, we were talking about the Neanderthal man. So when we saw that hairy peasant, we immediately took for granted that, well, here was one of the Neanderthal come to life. I tell you, the air was hazy, huh? A nerve to shock. You saw things that don't exist. Why? Why is it so bitter cold? That, at least, is reality. Yeah, keep moving. So, I'll answer my only question. It is bitter cold because time has moved back to the third interglacial age. Ah! You do not believe the evidence of your senses. Yet perhaps you will believe that that is a campfire up ahead. It is a fire. Here, yeah. quickly, Renan. Oh, quickly. Yeah. Can't you hobble faster? Kay, we'll get who's ever there to help us find Kay. Come, hurry, Renee, hurry. Hurry. It's the one we saw, all right. Keep your voice down. He will hear us. What? What manner of man is he? Time and time again, I have told you. But he, he and all like him have been dead 50,000 years. 
You said that yourself. Dead don't come back to life. We have come into his life, not he into ours. Kay, keep your voice down. Oh, but Kay, she is not there. You can see for yourself. Well, then she's lost. She's wandering around keep here. Keep your voice down. I warn you. Lunatic, savage, whatever he is, perhaps he's seen Kay. Get down, you fool. No, no, I'm going to talk to him. Stay down, Jeffrey. Hey, hey, you up there. Look. We, uh, we want to talk to you. You fool, you fool. What have you done there? See, he's, he's coming this way. Ah, uh, settle this. Oh, you. While we were on scene, we had a chance to plan, to do. But now, now. Don't talk. I, I was in West Africa for two years. I know how to deal with savages. Look at him. You think that is even a, a savage? Hmm. He stopped. Wait a minute. God. He's the ugliest beggar I've ever seen. Friends, old man. You see? Friends. Look, 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 money. I bring you money. And pretty thing. Oh, you, what a fool. Burned to money for him. Jeffrey, look out. Let, let me go, you. Jeffrey. Friends, I tell you. Jeffrey, I, I can't I help you. Do, do not try to hold back your tears, my friend. That devil. I never realized before what pain the human mind could endure. <laughs> Why did he do this to me? Why? Do you ask the wolf why it kills? Oh, killing would be one thing, but... Once uh, I saw a gypsy break the wings of a wild bird. Oh, right now. Oh. I never thought that the time would come in my life when I couldn't reason something out. But this, this is beyond reason. Thrown into a cave like a side of beef to wait. To wait for what? What? Oh, my you only. Wait. What? Someone is coming. I heard. I hear nothing. Listen. A woman. <laughs> Kay. Catherine. Is that you? Kay. Answer. Oh, Jeffrey. Oh, okay, you. Kay. Oh, Catherine, are you all right? Kay, where were you? No, no, you. Both of you all right? Oh, we're all right. We don't matter. You. Are you all right? You're dark in here. Are you all right? Tell me. Catherine, you. It is you that matters. What? No, no, listen. There's so little time. Eh? What? He's busy building up a fire. There's a chance if we run quickly. Run quickly? Yes, come. We. We're not at liberty to go, my dear. Why? A matter of broken bones. Oh, no. That is the way it is. Tell me what happened. Jeffrey, you. Claude, you. Tell me what happened to us. That old... Who is he? Is he really a Neanderthal? There is no doubt. But men like that have been dead for centuries. How did this happen? Why are we here? When the automobile went over the cliff, we went into another dimension of time. I don't understand. And I, too, understand little. But can it be that it bends in time or static things, that everything which occurs remains in existence as life moves on further along the, the corridor of time? Then you mean when the automobile went over the cliff, in some way we went back into time instead of forward? We? Oui. No. No, that's impossible. Things exist when they exist. Not afterwards. No. Now, there's a, there's a factual explanation to all this. Factual? Is not the pain of our bones fact enough? Is not... Wait. What is it? A chant of some sort. Why is he... What is he saying? What? The beginning of worship. The chant to the rising sun. What is happening to us? Only a few hours ago. So happy, the three of us. On our way to a party. Party? Another age. We've got to do something strange. What? Only a few hours ago, I was the girl. And you, Jeffrey, the calm, poised diplomat, of the green table. Stop talking nonsense. Huh? <laughs> He's coming in here. For us? We 
Pick up the deuces. Do you hear me? Do something. I won't die. I, I can't die. Do you hear me? Do something. I won't die like this. I can't. Give me. I'm sorry. I never could endure pain. We understand, Beverly. Try not to think, dear. All my life, I, I've known what to say. And now... Oh, Jeffrey. No. no. Let me talk. While I can talk, I'm a man. And I won't be a man when he gets in here. If I had a gun, a world of reason. And that's what it was to me. And everything could be settled with reason. In a world of reason. If I had a gun, everything could be straightened out at the conference table. Uh, that's what I thought. All my life it would be that way. All my life. But you see, that's because I've never met force in all my life. If I had a gun. But you can't reason with unreason, can you? When you're facing brute force, words and ethics and logic and good faith don't mean anything, do they? If I had no. a gun. You've got to face force with force. And a gun is force. And I've got a gun. Jeffrey. He thought of his head. Yes, yes, I tell you, I've got a gun. Diplomatic service. They made me carry it. Oh, I hated it. I thought I'd never use it, but... Now we've got to, don't we? We've got to. Oh, he's coming in here. God, Your right arm, all right. Reach in my pocket there. The gun, use it, use it. But I... I... Use it if we're to live, use it. Jeffrey, it's reaching. Come on, so I... My hands are... I tell you. All right, then. I'll shoot you. So, is it morning? We. Now. We go on living. Something may happen to return us to where we belong. I don't think so. Nor I. Perhaps. We will be able to leave some record behind us so that the world of the future will know and understand this strange thing that has happened, this meeting of the present and the past. Jeffrey, don't just stare. It's over. Talk to us. I was thinking... I just killed a man. Yet, it's 50,000 years before I was born. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard a fantasy, just a story about a long time ago world where brute and unreasoning force were the order of the day and men were afraid until they found deep courage within themselves. Yes, what you heard was just a fantasy. But think about it in terms of what happened in the recent past of our world and what might happen in the very near future. Think about it. But let's talk more about that after a word from your announcer. This is Mr. O again. We were talking about the future, all right? Let's talk about our future play. Of all the stories out of my writing past, the one that many people ask me about is the very strange story titled The Revolt of the Worms. Yes, worms. Those little night crawlers on your lawn, those strange, slimy creatures of the dark who plowed under the land long before mankind ever invented the plow. So, next week I bring you The Revolt of the Worms, and I challenge you to listen. It is later than you think. That's our story for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it and will join us again as we travel through the zero dimension in the theater of your own imagination. 
So until we meet again next week, when I bring you another story in the night, this is Van Crystal reminding you that the extent of your own imagination is unlimited. One purpose of these programs is to help you exercise those imaginative powers. I hope we've succeeded. Good night. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.